Yes, today we have Colo, aka Colossalus, live yeah. on Twitch. Um, you guys can check out his links. I'll drop them in chat as well. Colo, thanks, thanks for doing this, man. How are you? Yeah, man, I'm doing good. Uh, kind of been a crazy week for me since I'm still dealing with, uh, you know, trying to work remotely full time and trying to spend a lot of time with uh, with my brand new puppy that I have, you know, trying to teach her a lot of things. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been uh, you know a few a few nights that I just didn't sleep sleep uh, sleepless nights you can say. But yeah, besides that, I've been playing some video games and going to the gym and stuff. So it's been it's been good. So How about for yourself? people, dude, I'm doing great, man. I'm I'm happy to chat with you again. For people who don't yeah, know. Because uh, you've been in the channel before, most people will be familiar. But like for people who don't know, who who are you? Uh, what do you do? Right. So my my main uh, you can say profession is I'm a software developer, just like just like yourself, software engineer, software developer. Um, I develop uh, you can say software packages for insurance com insurance companies. Um, but I used to do game development. That was my original, um, you can say, uh, thing that I wanted to do. Um, on the side, though, because that's something that I do enjoy, but it's not the not the greatest for myself. I am a, um, a personal trainer and a nutritionist, um, a plant based nutritionist at that. Uh, kind of, that's something we can talk about later. Yeah. Um, and I just, dude, I fucking love games. I used to be a pro gamer as well. I used to play Heroes of the Storm Pro. Ha. Um, love, I do love that game until they killed it. <laughs> and um, yeah, and I, 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 I stream video games. I also have my own podcast where I talk about games. So yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I was on your podcast, right? So episode three. If people want to check it out, there will be links. As well, you can go jump in and, and listen to us. We had a good convo there. Uh, and also, I forgot awesome. to do this. Let's get boosted, man. Let's get boosted. Oh, let's go. Hell yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good stuff. So uh, I, I like that name for the podcast, the boosted. Where, where yeah, does that come from? Is that how you describe like getting jacked, basically? or Boosted Fit Games, dude. Um, yeah. So boosted is a running, it's kind of like a running joke in my channel. Um, I used to climb the ladder in Heroes of the Storm and ranked, huh. and um, I was getting like super, super high, and I was actually getting haters in my stream coming in. Players who I was beating were coming in and saying that I'm boosted. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if you if you know what boosted means. Basically, you're playing with somebody you're being who is carried, getting carried. Yeah, I'm getting carried by yeah. somebody. Like I paid somebody to carry to, me yeah. through the games. Um, but uh, obviously I wasn't, but it just kind of stuck. I was, you know, it's, and, and it <laughs> became boosted. a running joke. Yeah. Like, you know what, guys, I'm just boosted. You just know? boosted. I like it, <laughs> yeah. man. Yeah. I've been using yeah. it a bit. So <clears throat> yeah, it is awesome. I, I, I honestly, since you, since you, since you said it first time, like, let's get boosted. I was like, dude, let's get awesome. boosted, I'm, man. It's like the best intro. Awesome. Let's get boosted. Yo. <laughs> yes. Good. Finding out games, rip HGC, dude. I, uh, I was actually in um, before HGC uh, was HGC was I think it was Heroes Global Championship. Yeah, and I was in Natus Vincere. That was the, mm -hmm. the team I was in. Navi. Yes, exactly. Uh, because I followed Dota too. I played you know many thousands yeah. of hours, and they they also had a team. Navi did, uh, so I I'm familiar with some of the names of the ARGs. Um, but Hell dude, yeah. okay, so we have a bunch to talk about today. Yes, and. Um, I'm excited, man. Yeah, let's start because people are excited, right, about Cyberpunk. Yes. F initial impressions. This is totally spoiler free for people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, we're not going to cover story or, or anything like that. But yeah. you've played a few hours, right? So it's just like the, your first hands on with it. So talk to us. Where are you playing it on? Like, wh what's your system? So people mm -hmm. have the context. You know, how is it running? What's your first feel of the game so far? So I, just for the context, I've played six hours, um, just in general, and I do play on the PC. Um, I, I am using a 3080. Uh, just, so it's, it's, it's kind of like a top spec. It's not a 3090. I don't have like a, you know, the best of the best, but it's a top spec PC, I would say. Yes. It's like a 3080, 3700X, uh, um, 
CPU. So yeah. it's it's pretty good. Um, so I am I so first I want to kind of talk technical, right? I want to talk about feel when it comes to frame rates and stuff. Yeah. Um, that's been terrible. Man, <laughs> for me, for uh -huh. me at least. So because you want. 60 fps in 1440p isn't it so for me it's 50 uh, 5120 by 1440. if people don't so, understand they're like what's this madness he actually chose to have like an ultra wide monitor nobody yes. forced him just to be clear he <laughs> right he actually wanted an yes ultra, i i'm just i i always i have a running joke at people who okay. go for ultra wides but uh, to be honest, it's dope for some stuff, but it sounds like mm -hmm. for this game, it's not doing so well. Yeah. So first, first thing I wanted to say is that they, they uh, actually one of their selling points was that they're gonna support ultra wide and it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna give you some additional, uh, you know, no, not additional features, but it's gonna give you, you know, like the field of view and you'll have, you know, the peripheral vision, you can say. But that's just been rough. Basically, when you go into uh, because my resolution is is what's called super ultra wide, so it's thirty two by nine. It's not twenty one by nine. Yeah. Yeah, that's madness, so, dude. So it's forty nine inches, but so huh? That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so it's forty nine inches, but so yeah, it's fifty one twenty by forty and forty. That's thirty two by nine. So it's even it's even larger. So it's like basically having two twenty five sixty by forty and forty. Huh, uh, yeah. monitors next to each other uh -huh. um so when i when i turned that on everything is just out of scale basically like things highlighting stuff for you are completely out of whack like they don't know what what you know what what ux is yeah um so yeah so that's been my uh, my experience and actually like indoors when i'm in game indoors i'm i'm fine i'm like 60 to 70 frames i'm running okay. like mostly highest settings but on performance uh, DLSS. But when I get into the city and more crowded areas, I drop down to like 35, and 40 do frames. do you have RTX on? Yes, RTX is on. What what setting? Because they had like ultra... Max setting. Max, okay. So I have max setting, but I have the DLS DLSS on performance. But so not it's like... the cycle setting, right? Just the ultra. No, 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 no. It's not the, not yeah. the cycle setting. It's, so, yeah, because so for it's people, the, people who don't know, they have like an extra level so they have like yeah. ultra for rtx and then they also have cycle which you know even on the 3090 is just like impractical basically mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah i see what you mean jonathan yeah i definitely agree um i think 34 40 by 14 40 is a good resolution for games for... yeah yes i think you know what you have is really nice for for workstation if you're doing yes. some Right, like for me, music production, the way it works is you have like a big timeline as well, mm -hmm. or video editing, because I know you do mm -hmm. some of that as well. Yeah, that's nice to have it all there. You have the entire timeline, dude. Yeah. It's, it's it's awesome. Um, it's also but, yeah, way all... overkill and it, uh, it madness. But <laughs> like, I, I'm not I'm not even gonna justify. This is a like super ultra wide is is an overkill. So, uh, are you doing yeah. gamepad or mouse and keyboard? Mouse and keyboard. And are you happy so far? Uh, so the inputs, you cannot re uh, remap the inputs, which is You cannot? Nuts. You cannot. Oh. So if somebody doesn't run uh, WASAD, W-A-S-D, you're, <laughs> you're, 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 uh, you're, out of, you're out of luck. Like yeah. I, I used to, whenever I have the chance, I run TGFH. I don't just want to call because, you a madman again, like so early in the show. But I mean, what are you doing? Just Why? because you have you have so many more buttons. So if you, if you have on TGFH, your pinky can go on to X, S. I have so many counterpoints to this. Okay, sure. first, if you think of your hand like this, like a claw, your thumb is right on the Alt button when you're doing Wasad. <laughs> Was it's actually on the yeah Space Alt Space Alt. It, yeah, space alt. So you, it's the perfect positioning. If you take it to TG, what is it? TFG? TGFH. Madness, so T is forward, right? G, G, G is backwards. You no longer have access to the left alt button unless you use your pinky. Pinky, which, yeah. Are you saying you use your pinky? I do a lot. Let's move on because this is going to be a big, <laughs> <laughs> a big point of contention. Uh, 
so overall it's not super stable then for you like fps wise yeah yeah it's mostly been fps wise honestly i've seen a lot of people having problems like you know visual problems visual bugs yeah but i've not i've not um, not a lot so far I haven't uh, really experienced uh, besides one or two like people going into each other, like basically going into walls like a couple of times, but that's that's been it. I haven't been experiencing any game breaking bugs or any like huge bugs like people T posing or stuff like that. I haven't seen that. Same have, for have me. You? Same for me. I, you know, maybe as we play more because I think both you and I were in the early hours, so we'll we'll yeah. have to see. But yeah, nothing that would hinder my enjoyment so far. Um, Suggestion, RT reflections on, shadows off, lighting, medium, DLSS on quality. That's one thing uh, I mentioned it earlier. If you can have DLSS on quality, it's a big noticeable difference because mm -hmm. there's a blurriness to the performance DLSS. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. so I'd suggest set that on quality. Um, RTX, just reflections is really good and having the other stuff off gives you some fps back mm -hmm. um and then play with some of the other settings that's how i would tune it but anyways mm -hmm. sure um okay good so I anything else on cyberpunk because i know it's really like early days for us oh yeah to comment uh yeah so we we just uh i thought we just started dude come on <laughs> no let's so go deeper what do you got uh so i'm not sure what kind of setup are you running but i am running uh mostly reflexes uh reflexes with some intelligence so kind of like okay. a net runner that's gonna run around like a ninja slash people up so i'm i'm kind of uh, trying to find uh, early mantis blades which i know it's not very easy to do what is that i don't I don't know Mantis that... blades are basically like weapons that are coming out of your hands they, they, like katanas but out of your I, I, I may want that because the character I want to do for stream that we're starting today is like mm -hmm. a, 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 a crazy lady, katana lady. Yes. Um, and also like good at cybernetics and stuff. It's so like that's exactly sneaking. what I'm doing. It's, I, very similar, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the initial impression of that, I'm not sure if you want to actually hear it then because I guess, have you experienced much of the game yet? I, I would say let's not get too much into it because I think that's some of the fun, isn't it? Figuring out some of those systems. Mm -hmm. We can have mm -hmm. you on, you know, later. later. Once we've played a bunch, we can talk about the systems in depth. I think that yep. would be a cool chat. Yeah, it, initial impression is that I was very frustrated. Um, mm. The game, I'm, I'm playing on hard. Yeah. And the game throw you throws you right in i'm currently in the prologue again no spoilers uh but i i try to do a lot of, of the side stuff and the game doesn't really inform you oh this is too hard for you and i went in and got my ass whooped multiple times and yeah. that led to me being just super frustrated with the game yeah i, um, I find that it really wants you to do some of the main missions early on to kind yes. of get your feet under you and then go from there but it doesn't, so, I respect that it doesn't stop you from, you know, mm -hmm. doing whatever you want to do because um, it is like tailored towards replayability. One of the mm -hmm. first things you see in the game is like, hey, if you've already played, you can disable the tutorialization, right? Because mm -hmm. the, the last thing you want if you're replaying is to learn how to walk again in the game. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of that that I think is really cool. But I, I would recommend for people, at least for me, it helped to do the, you know, the couple initial missions where they describe yeah. some of the main mechanics and stuff. I did that find it off-putting, dude. I don't know about you. Like, I was expecting to be able to one-shot people if I hit them in the head. Right. Almost like, like a mini Call of Duty, I guess. Like, you know, if, if you do a pop shot, that's, that's a wrap, right? Mm -hmm. Um. But it's not, it's, it's like a Borderlands where it's just like or, a crit yeah. zone, you know? So you, you crit, but even early on, you're not killing a dude. Yes, there's no way. Yeah. Um, it's very RPG in that sense, yep. where you have to, where even your headshots will deal one tenth or even one twentieth of the, of the dude's health. A, a crit will deal, will deal like 50 damage out of like a thousand. Um, it's, it's very off-putting. Um, and Top says, pay attention to the danger level on the on the on the things. And you know what? I so that's what I usually do in games. I usually don't. 
I, I never play games in normal. I'm not sure if, if that's how you also play it, but I Depends also, on the game. I, no, I tend to go okay. towards hard mode. Yes, exactly. So I, I, I tend to go towards uh, hard mode, and I very rarely have a problem with the game being hard. But here I was, um, there, was a, there was a mission, again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I was running in, there were three dudes, and um, basically I had to cheese my way to do the mission because I was getting three shot and I was dead. Right. Or I was shooting them in the face multiple times and I was just very slowly grinding at them. So the game, I, I think, does a very poor job so far of, of informing me what is the actual difficulty of, uh, of, the, of the thing I'm coming up on. It says, uh -huh. you know, the risk high, risk very high. I was going to a risk medium and I was getting my ass handed to me. So, yeah, w what I did here is like, it really relies on you specking your character and upgrading weapons and stuff. So mm -hmm. for example, if you're trying to sneak, but you don't have like a proper weapon for, uh, I don't know, maybe a sniper or whatever it is you're going for, and you haven't upgraded it, you know, you haven't put points into the, the different perks and, and things, you still are going to suck. At, like, you, you know, you may be trying to do the right thing, like the execution may be correct, but you don't have the stats to back it up, let's say, to back up that play style. So there's a mm -hmm. lot of it that, you know, I, I appreciate because the game respects you enough yes. to the strategy is not going to work if you don't have your ducks in a row, so to speak, mm -hmm. which I can respect, but I think it's going to take some, you know, tweaking and like trial and error. As you say, mm -hmm. you go into an area and it's like impossible. So, okay, yes. let's back out, right? Back out. Let's try some other missions. Let's upgrade our weapons and, and learn some new stuff and then come back, have which you, I think um, is fair enough. Have you tried any fist fighting? A little bit. Yeah. It's quite awkward on keyboard for me. Joke. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I, I, again, <laughs> the joke? Wow. I, 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 I don't want to be, I don't want to be negative, you know, because negative, I, I don't know. I, it's just not me, but um, there was a mission where there's fist fighting and holy moly, what an awkward piece of junk. Um, I would say, just let me, let, let me back this up Explain, uh, yeah. very quickly. Um, <laughs> when the game rubber bands an enemy to you when you don't perform a successful dodge mm. so for example i'm two meters away from the dude because i i sprinted away but i didn't perform the dodge the game rubber bands a dude to me to punch me in the face i That's had that exact change. thing happen in the tutorial not yes. after so i think so far i don't know enough about the game so far i think it's just in the tutorial because things are mm -hmm. hooked up in a way you know they want to show you that oh you missed your your dodge so you get mm -hmm. hit uh, but i haven't seen that happen in action after mm -hmm. in the few missions i've done so i'm hoping it's just in the tutorial i don't know i, I actually, have to play I've, i actually have a video of that happening later okay so it does happen yeah that's annoying we didn't notice it because some some folks were hanging out with me while i was playing and they mm -hmm. they also commented like yo that guy hit you from like two meters. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. Uh, but just to just to say on the just on the flip side, besides all these things, I am being critical, but I fucking love the game, dude. There's something about the world, man. It's so fleshed right? out. Yeah, and um, also like to me because I uh, I also read the world of cyberpunk lore book. Mm -hmm. Do you know mm -hmm. that book that came out? Yes. So I had so like for me, you know, driving through the streets of Watson. You know, I actually read about, you know, the location. So what's it all about? What's the character of the people in it, right? So uh, there's a lot of those small things that kind of flash it out for me. And um, every time I jump in, is I don't want to leave. Yeah. Every time I jump in, I com feel completely immersed. I want to... I, wanna, I just want to kind of like walk around the, the streets. I want to jump in the, into my car. Usually in the uh, at night, I just jump in and I just want to experience the city. And 
even though there are frustrations in the game, they don't take away from that feeling that I just want to be immersed and I completely fucking love it. I'm sorry for, for swearing, by the way. I'm not sure if, if we're allowed. No, this is for mature publics. So you okay. can, cool. yeah, you can uh, swear to your heart's content. Um, so yes, uh, j just to just kind of to, to reiterate, I am being critical, but I completely love yeah. it. Um, yeah, you, think... you know, a lot of times we're really critical on stuff we love, right? Yeah, exactly. We get nitpicky because there's so much they get right that yeah. there's also... So yeah, what, um, have you played much or not on not at all? Not too much. I I think I've clocked about eight hours of it. On on like my personal character that I was okay. playing off camera, um, yeah. doing some of the first main missions and fucking around a bit, trying to get used to the driving, which on yeah. keyboard rough. is a is a is a bit rough, isn't it? Especially it if you're are you also a madman. In the sense that you drive from the inside the car no perspective? no no screw that okay. good no uh, so at least good. you draw the line there so ultra wide is okay with you but you draw the line at driving cars uh, from yeah, the inside yeah. perspective um so and definitely i would say a great i, I agree with grace the the story definitely has me hooked but mm -hmm. again we're not gonna spoil yeah. any of that uh, Jonathan says you have the same headset. I own it as well. Same color. Hey, gang, gang. Hey, man. man. Woo! The gang. Yeah, gang, gang. Uh, and Nitro, happy Catter Day, man. Welcome back. What FOV does everyone use? Good question. I kept it at the default 80. What about you? Maximum 100. I think it's kind of like a must if you have an ultra wide. I was going to ask you, like, how does that tie? Bec because you already have naturally giant mm -hmm. FOV. Because, well, you have this ma mad screen. Mm -hmm. Does the FOV... So if, if let's say, I want to understand this. If I have an FOV of 80 in the mm -hmm. setting, you go in with your mad monitor. Yes. Do you have to adjust that based on your monitor? Or does it automatically kind of adjust things for you? So if I have an 80... Uh, it's basically like having 80 degrees of kind of like your viewing angle of your eyes. So basically, if you put it to 100, you automatically extend this. So you will see a little bit more of your peripheral vision. Mm -hmm. um, so if I, if I keep it on the 80, I will see more, but I will see um, more like it was, it's going to be similar to your experience. But if you're putting it in, in 100, what I found is that it makes the the experience better because when I when I kept it at 80, everything on the sides was getting like very big for some reason, and I don't know why. Oh. Um. So uh, uh, putting it at 100 makes it better, but still, st some things get uh, get very big. Yeah, I'll try. I'll try 90 today. I see some people suggesting 90. Yeah. I think that's what I had for other games. Play around with it, dude. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's the thing, man. It's, it, when you go to above 100, that's like a fish eyed lens FOV mm -hmm. already. Like you start to see things to your side yes. as if you're a horse or something, you know, <laughs> it, it, horse it, action. yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like it's unnatural. I don't know, but yeah, I guess uh, with that kind of monitor, it sort of works. Some people, uh, some people are just suggesting to actually go 90 with ultra wide. So I'll, I'll definitely try that. Um, mm. a hundred might actually be what's, uh, what's kind of off-putting. So I will try 80 and I will report back whenever we, we talk again. Yeah. I'll, I'll try a, a few different settings as well. It's a good, it's a good point. What do you think about the RPG system so far? So the itemization and, uh, the crafting and the upgrades, have you, have mm. you doubled at all? So I'm starting, only starting to figure it out now. I think it's interesting enough that, you know, I'm, I'm in it, so I'm into it. Um, there's a lot there to unpack. It feels a little bit overwhelming, but then again, every good RPG does at first, mm -hmm. right? So I really haven't unpacked it enough to like do mm -hmm. a critique on it in any meaningful way. Uh, but I've been, you know, I've been enjoying exploring it so far. Um, do you feel, because I think there are, what is five basic stats? Is it? I think it's for six, five or six, right? So you have strength. Uh... So yeah, you have the the strength, you have the reflexes, intelligence, coolness. Cool. Yeah, cool. 
Yeah. And, and cool just... is a mix of like keeping your cool, but also being cool, right? Yeah. From what I understand. So that unlocks dialogue options, like a charisma yeah. thing. Uh, and that's the part for me that I love because I'm already seeing a lot of um, dialogue unlocks based on the stats that I have. Mm -hmm. And I think that's for me the juice. You know, I think back to Fallout and the times where, you know, you could, you could do a different line because you, you happened to be, I don't know, very strong, for example, you know, that kind of thing. I think that's cool. Um, so there's a question, Jonathan, can you play, uh, Colo, can you play with a lower res, not super ultra wide? Uh, yes, and I, I definitely can. I definitely tried. So I tried to play in the game at 34, 40 by 40, 40. The, the performance was actually much better because I'm not, because we are saving like 500,000 pixels or something like that. So yeah. it's quite a lot. Um, but I don't know for, for me. Uh, so currently I switched back. So currently what I'm doing is I have picture by picture. So I have you on like one side of the monitor and I will usually play on my other side of the monitor here. Right. Uh, so now I'm playing on a 2560 by 1440, just a 1440p. Okay. Um, so that's actually been very, very good for me so far. Um, and I'm actually enjoying playing on that. Uh, but I, uh, again, I will fiddle, fiddle more around with the settings and probably report back. And, and because again... I've been trying to focus on the game and not, uh, and I've been just, sp I spent literally like minutes, I would say, out of the hours that I've spent in the game, uh, minutes in the settings. Let's get into the character creator, because this is a big one, right? Oh, select your size, your penis size. For some reason, people are very keen on specifying their penis size. I, particularly, I don't understand the obsession, uh, because, well, you never get to see it for one. Um, but then again, it literally has no effect. So I don't know. Do you care about character creator? What are your thoughts on the character creator for oh, the game? Oh, size in the in the game. Um, oh, I should have specified <laughs> because the way yeah. I said it was like just in general. But yes, in the game. Yeah, dude. I mean, we can talk in general. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, in the game, so I am not a huge person who spends like hours and hours creating the character like i try to make my because usually uh, kind of uh, to give context usually uh, the first um playthrough that i do in any rpg game will kind of kind of i'll try to reflect myself in the game and like what i th uh, what, what i think my choices would be and stuff like that so i tried to make myself uh, make myself a character like just look my, like myself but i failed miserably he looks like a freaking blob um <laughs> like a yeah, like you would you, you would pull some homeless color off the street or something. Uh -huh. um, but again, I'm not a person who would spend a lot of time, but I think there are a lot of options. So it's not as in depth as you uh, as for example, like uh, Black Desert Online. I'm not sure if you ever played that. I haven't it's, played uh, it, but it's famous for its character creation. Exactly. Yeah. So it's definitely not as deep as that, but I would say for me, it it checks off all the bells and whistles. whistles. I even enjoyed the tattoos that they offer you. I, I love what's there, but mm -hmm. I wish there was more. Yes. For example, there are five body tattoos. I'm not excited. Mm -hmm. So I'm, this is the number of total tattoos you have to choose between. Mm -hmm. so, On the body. On the body so for me i wish there there were more uh could you choose tattoos for for like your arms no just your face or your body that was it body yeah uh you also couldn't choose anything about your body in general funny enough aside from the penis so you know you can choose your genitals people so you're sorted there but if you want to tweak how your body looks no mm -hmm. you can't there's nothing right um i understand the height not being able to be changed because that that goes into the gameplay yes right uh a lot of cutscenes would look weird if your height is different um but i i did expect a bit more but with that said they can add more maybe in the future and exactly. what's there is really high quality i think it all looks you know th there's plenty there to make really high quality characters like looking really awesome and in in theme with what the game offers for me the highlight is the eyes you there were oh, yeah. some really unique eye options it's not just color it you know really like unique designs 
and uh, I, I was almost like inspired to create a different character for each type of eye. Like, you know, this guy would be like a bullseye type character. This other one would be, you know, like a psychomaniac. Anyways, so there's a lot to, to go on, mm -hmm. I feel, with the eyes, at least. Yeah, dude, the, the thing that really resonated with me and I really enjoyed kind of like putting on my character was the, the, the cybernetics. Yeah. Dude, I, I love I loved putting it like you know on my face, and I I just love that kind of um, that fantasy of yeah. you know, of cyberpunk, right? Oh, where yeah. you have you have some sort of like uh, metallic stuff running through your face, where uh -huh. you know where you see that there was some kind of modification to enhance yourself or something like so that. So you would I, be I... the kind of person you would choose to have it visible in some way, like if you had like a, a an augmented arm. You would want to have some metal showing to like yeah so i would not go like some um i think it was like cyber psycho i would not go that far like yeah to, just to have like completely you know a cybernetic arm but i would definitely have like you know basically cuts in my skin where it would uh, basically be you know uh, just kind of signs of cybernetics being there no that's not allowed the way they do it is they replace your fucking arm but they give you skin on the arm, on the arm. so it looks like a normal arm if you want or mm -hmm. also they can have you know as you say like parts of it that are showing metal yeah but normally they they do just replace your entire arm. either forearm or arm so, so it's usually, a pretty permanent i would usually choose it to to look like my normal arm but probably uh -huh. i would go uh, for with, the cybernetic yeah with with some stuff yeah dude yeah um but most important question what penis size dude uh i went for medium i don't have anything to prove i don't know <laughs> I went with the big one. I mean, uh, it's just like you're never gonna see it. Honestly, you, when you go into the shower, you have a shower with your clothes on. Yeah, exactly. You could shower with the clothes on, and you Do can't. You I did try to look down, like, hey, can I check it out? No, it's it doesn't bruh. work. So what's the point? Can maybe maybe it will be visible in some romance options? Boosted later? size. <laughs> Boosted. <laughs> Creators freaking killing it, dude. Yeah, I don't know. It's just um, I was very aware that you rarely ever see your character. Mm -hmm. So, um, finding that, out games definitely that that's definitely compensating. Case. I am completely the opposite, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Boosted. Um, yeah, like I, I knew I wasn't gonna see the character too much, so that kind of stuff, like under the clothes. I really cares, right? couldn't couldn't care much about it. Um, the clothes, the clothes. clothes. I, I want to talk to you about the the. I appearance. look like a hobo in my nomad you character. Do. I look like a freaking clown, dude. <laughs> dude, it's like, so bad. The best stats on my gear are on some freaking like neon glowing yeah. jacket with like dark uh, <laughs> dark hat, and I have I think I have some like some swim swimming pants and shit like that. It's mm. crazy. What's in that game yeah um i don't know it will be interesting because now i'm gonna play a corp a corpo character after this so you know i i assume stream, the yeah? clothes yeah i assume the clothes will be a lot different than the nomad the nomad is like i have a mexican hat that's about it like a, a shitty shirt you know it, it it's a disaster i need to improve that situation crazy crazy um I think that I will I will find like my suit like that I I like and then mm -hmm. I'll just upgrading it. But I guess that kind of leads into another thing that the, uh, I don't want to I, I I don't want to be very critical. But again, the the economy so far seems very very scarce. Like I am not able to upgrade many things. Like I've been playing for for six hours and I've only been able to upgrade one item once. Hmm. That's kind of crazy. Like in uh, just uh, obviously you cannot compare the games, but in Valhalla, after six hours, I was upgrading uh, left and right. Like obviously but, they're completely different yeah, games. Yeah, but I but... think yeah, I was gonna say I think that's kind of expected because if if you could upgrade a ton of shit early on, you may be overwhelmed. Like yo, what do I upgrade? Right. Whereas if you can only upgrade a. Uh, uh, upgrade later on you have more information as to what you want to upgrade what you're going for as your mm -hmm. you know style so 
for me, it works that kind of thing where, you know, it takes you a little bit to even have resources to, to do anything. Mm. And I think it, it also ties into the main story, which we're not going to get into, which yes. is, you know, at, at one point you may do a big hit and then you get some money from that. For example, like in typical movies and stuff. Uh, and before then, you know, you can't really afford much, let's say. So I think that can make sense, but I, I would have to just play more and see. How do you uh, how do you find the economics in the game the the money? Well, so they they have euro dollars right as their main currency. They call them eddies. Eddie. Eddies. Um, I think it's okay so far. It, it's you can sell um, everything at any shop, right? So any shop is as good as any basically. So you can always sell your junk very easily, which that I like. So there's one button for sell junk, mm -hmm. makes it easy. In those RPG games, I think back to Division, man, inventory management was a disaster. Crazy. And, yeah. you know, I spent a lot of time in, in, in that. So it feels like it's going to be okay in this game. But uh, I just have to play it more so far. I mean, do you have yeah, any thoughts so far on the currency? Oh, yeah. So I think um, that's also something that I've been hearing from um, the reviews I've been, I've been reading. Uh, that, uh, And I, I can definitely back it up that this the economy in this game is kind of... I would say unbalanced. Um, so you earn very like you have to grind a lot of missions and like you can hack a lot of machines. Uh, by the way, you can hack machines to actually get money out of them, which is freaking cool. Oh, uh, I love that. Nice. Yeah. Um, and uh, by the way, when you hack, you have three options. You can you can do the easiest one, which will give you like a hundred or something of the eddies, and then you can do the medium, which is like two fifty, and then the the hardest is for me oh, right cool. now. It's usually cool. five hundred. So obviously the hardest is uh, like, will take you a little bit, but they're not too hard. Um, but it seems that you have to really grind a lot for to actually buy anything. Uh, so after after six hours, I believe I'm currently sitting at about ten thousand eddies, and that doesn't really get me anything great in the shop. Uh, again, hmm. again, this this is kind of like. Um, matter of preference right like yep. some people will prefer their game to start up slower but for me you I, know I think what will... i love the idea of like saving up for a weapon for example or saving up for a car okay. yeah you know like that idea that <clears throat> i'm in the world and you know there's a push like i want to do this mission because it's gonna allow me to buy like a new fucking jacket Definitely. Or so. Definitely. Okay. I I definitely agree with that, and I definitely do feel. So I wanted to say this that I do feel like I'm working towards a goal. So right now I'm uh, getting 15k to get my first Monty's blades. So I need like 5,000 more, um, and that's gonna be sick as hell, dude. I'm gonna I'm gonna love that. What's up, Spaniard? Spaniard, how's it going, man? My dude, <laughs> how's it going? <clears throat> How do you feel about the hacking mini game overall? So you mean hacking the the machines? So or when, the, when you hack, hack something, you get like this mini game, right? Where you have mm -hmm. to get the numbers and mm -hmm. stuff. Do you ever get any other games? Because I've only got this one mini game. So far is the only one I've gotten, but it's so yeah. early. I don't know. There, it may be different later. It's cool. It's yeah. it's it's uh, for the first six hours. I don't feel like it's getting old, but I can definitely see it getting old after like two hundred hours. Yeah. Well, it's got to um, change at some point, right? Because stuff is, is getting more complex. So I'm sure it's going to add on I more. I wonder if there will be any more mini games later on. Uh, I hope so. Because I I definitely, dude, like, I was very skeptical about uh, about about the hacking in this game. Uh, but before it came out, I was like, they have to do something cool to interest me. But it def they definitely got, have me hooked so far. Um, how do you think about the quick hacks, though? I haven't even... Try that. What what is the quick hack? So the quick hack is when you tab and you choose the up. You tab on somebody, so you scan them, and then you choose the option to do one of them. I think it was actually in the tutorial even. So I've done them. that. I just I I didn't. I wasn't familiar with the term quick hack. Okay, so that's what they call quick hack when you tab tab on somebody and yeah. you choose one of the options to um, okay to do a quick hack because you don't have to perform like these mini games. That, I think that's why. Uh, yes. Why cool. Yeah. So I've done it for stuff like turn off a camera, you know, or like okay. distract, right? That kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. So I've actually, um, the mission that I was talking about, that was very hard. I've only done it because I was using hacks. Yeah. Um, so 
basically I was hacking like some machine to distract a couple of guards. I took one one of them out, and then later I used the quick hack to uh, incapacitate one guy. Yeah. Uh, to like it shocked him, so it was very cool. I uh, it activated and kind of shocked him there for a second. He was like he was like you know he was like stumbling and stuff like that. It was very cool to see. I love the animation. Um, I. I actually missed the opportunity to kill him because I was so so odd. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I, I find it cool. But pr uh, so when you play play on on Wusad on WASD, it's hard to hold tab and then choose the option and then press F to. No, but uh, you can choose the option with mouse as well. Uh, with the scroll. So yeah. So you hold tab and you can scroll yeah. as well. Yeah. So yeah. So you, you you do so you do tab scroll and then you have to actually uh, you have to commit to the option by pressing F. Yes. So that's what that's what kind of has has been awkward for me. Where in the middle of the combat I have to do tab scroll F. But I, I feel like that's awkward for you because of the TG. No. Oh, I haven't I haven't changed it because no, you don't allow you. Okay. Because I'm super used to hitting F. It's like a natural button for me. Mm -hmm. So executing a hack with F seems fine. So I'm holding tab with uh, with like my third finger. Let's yes. this looks wrong. With my third <laughs> finger. Uh, it's fine. It's not the middle finger. Um, and yeah, then, you know, so with my first, well. with my index finger, I'm hitting F. And that works for me. But you're saying that seems awkward for you? Yeah, so I'm, us so I'm using basically... if. If you look at the camera, I'm using this finger yeah. to, to hit my tab. Yeah. This finger to hit my F. It's perfect. And yeah, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> but what, what I'm finding awkward is you have to hit three buttons to perform a hack in the middle of fighting where I get sh shot three times and I'm dead. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. The timing. The actual minigame of, of, of choosing the option is, is fine. Because just... time stops, right, when you tab? Doesn't no. It? I don't think it does. Doesn't it slow down or doesn't something? It? I'm Guys, not too sure now. I'm <laughs> Chat, does it get us boost us? Dude. <laughs> Guys, tell me because I am boosted, but I didn't think I'm that boosted. <laughs> I'm even getting boosted in single player games. Yeah, yeah. It slows. Okay, so it yeah. slows. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. It was nice to talk to you guys. I'm I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so yeah, so just completely disregard that point. I um So it gives I, you for, some it gives you some time. Some time. For some reason, I thought it doesn't slow and. Uh... But I can. I think I can see your point. If you're using W and S to cycle through the options, then you know you're juggling a lot of balls, metaphorically speaking. The balls. <laughs> yeah, because you're holding Tab and F, and then you know. Yeah, <clears throat> I think oh, I can slow? see what you what you're saying. It slows, but I'm pretty sure it's related to your CyberDeck OS. Okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's another thing that I really find cool that you have to actually upgrade your your Ram. inner your your innards, yes. your your inners. Yeah. Like y y when you upgrade, you get more RAM and uh, yeah, you get like more um, more options, which is very cool. I think. Okay, what's... so mm, go on. Yeah. Go on. Um, so I was, as I was saying, that is just um... I forgot. Okay, go ahead. Someone said uh, the character creator needs a slider for sack size. Hey, the, you're never gonna see it, man. That's one of the things you you never see your reflection unless you turn on the mirror, and even then you need to actually turn it on. Um, otherwise, it doesn't reflect. So if you go to like a I don't know to a a skyscraper and it's a shiny glass surface, if you look right onto it you won't see yourself. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, it may seem like a small thing, but it w I was actually looking forward to that, to like go yeah. into a glass surface and seeing myself for the yeah. first time in a game. Um, um, uh, well, it's not the first time. Spider-Man does it with RTX, but you it know, it's, it's one of those like cool new things you can get. Uh, Legions does it also, but I guess in Legions, you. You are third person. You can all view yourself at this, at all times. True. Uh, it's yeah. I find it kind of interesting how they got away with using mirrors in this game, where you have to activate the mirror that it works. Don't you don't you find that amusing? Like mm -hmm. they they implemented all this RTX stuff, and now you have to activate the mirror to see yourself. I understand. I do it's very find it weird. weird. 
the mirror Thank stuff you. for me, I don't understand. What right? Yeah, you have to turn it on. I know it's like an you know a performance thing. If it was on all the time, there could be issues with the reflections. And again, reflections don't work uh, yeah. in general for your character. So apparently that was a big problem. A Spaniard, uh, basically. V's uh, Dracula. Uh, so it's funny you mentioned it, Spaniard. I was uh, considering role-playing around that, actually, because my huh. character isn't, you know, can't, can't see herself, well, or himself, whatever, on the mirror. Right. I, I was going to go, like, on a, on a crazy thing. It's like, mm, is she, you know, maybe a vampire? Uh, but anyways, shenanigans. And yes, the music apparently is still problematic, even with the <laughs> license mode off. So their recommendation is for any streamers to turn off the music entirely 40, for now. 40 FPS on the 2080 Super at 1080p. Uh, I guess it's just down to really turning off some, some things. Like, yeah, the game... The, the thing the is, the Still sad can. truth... And this is just based on videos I've watched. Uh, even a 1080 Super, which is a great card, is not up to scratch when it comes to RTX in this style. Yeah, a 2080. Did I say 10? 1080, yeah. Sorry, I meant 2080. So a, a 2080 Super is not a card that's going to get you good FPS oh. with RTX on. Crazy, right? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And it sucks for people who, you know, bought those cards mm -hmm. at, when they came out. When they came out, they, you know, like uh, around 500, 700 bucks. And now, obviously, you, you can buy, the, well, if you can buy the new ones, they are, you know, a much better deal. But that's tech for you. That's how it goes. Yeah. Um, honestly, this card will will be fine for all other games, but it seems that optimization for Cyberpunk at the current moment is kind of in the toilet. And I would say if if this, if this performance is big for you and you haven't bought the game yet, wait three months at least. Yeah. Well, um, so I would say DLSS, just keep it on. There's no reason. If you have, you know, an NVIDIA card, you, you need DLSS on. Have it on quality because other settings are blurry, but quality is undistinguishable from native. So it's uh, interesting that you say it because I have it on performance and it hasn't been blurry for me. I had to turn. Well, it's not like Vaseline on your eyes. It's more like yeah. noticeable if you're, you know, paying close attention to details and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's personal preference, right? If for you yeah. it's it's working fine, then by all means, kind of tune it down. Yeah, and... for, for myself, I just I just needed to uh, remove film for, uh, film grain, and once I removed film grain, it was it was fine. I kind of like film grain. I don't know. Okay. Quality isn't blurry. No. Um, well, it's like anything. If you compare side by side, sure, you may see differences, but that's not how people experience a game, right? Mm -hmm. Comparing two snapshots side by side. The way we experience a, ga a game is by playing it. And when I play it, I, I don't see any any difference. So that will be up to, up to you. Um, <laughs> Okay, so we talked a lot about Cyberpunk, dude. Let, let me take you into a bit of uncharted territory because we talked a little bit about like cybernetics and implants or, or even like um, uh, body augmentation, like replacing parts of your body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It sounded like you weren't on board. You, you wouldn't just like replace your forearm or something. What if I could boost you <laughs> to steal your own term? What if I could boost you, dude? I could give you some kick-ass cybernetic arms, right? But, and here's the catch, I would take off the entire shebang, right? Mm -hmm. you, you would be asleep through the end. You wouldn't know, mm -hmm. okay? I would take off your entire arm, both of your arms, okay. and I would give you a replacement that looks just like your arms, even your skin, right? Mm -hmm. And it feels the same way. Let's say no hurdles, right? No issues. Uh, it just works like Todd mm -hmm. says, and <laughs> and you have like insane strength with it. As a result, would okay. you accept? Uh, There's no going back. By the way, I, you can't just like replug your yeah yeah your your old arm. You're all in. 
Uh, fuck no. Um, so that's kind of like the same reason why I never used and they will never use steroids. Um, why not? Let's get boosted, man. What's going? <laughs> What's um, wrong? So, you know, it would take away this feeling of progression for me. Mm. And yeah, yeah. progression is uh, is like a big is like a big thing for me when it com- uh, when it comes to like my bodybuilding competitions and the nutrition that I do for my clients. Like progression is something that I honestly live for when it comes to health and just overall physique. Um, but that's so, really interesting because a lot of people would say the whole point of working out is to get to this end state where mm-hmm. you're you're jacked, right? Mm-hmm. You're boosted. Yes. But you're saying no, it's about the process. It's the it's the actual road. It's the road and seeing the improvements and getting that brain chemistry feedback. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like if I would have uh, what you just said, if I would have both of my arms chopped the, the fuck off and replaced. <laughs> with some cybernetics yeah like what's what's the what's the point of going to the gym anymore what's the point of training anymore i i i'm I'm just gonna have that forever and i'm gonna be super well you could just yeah i don't know i mean you probably wouldn't go to the gym you're right again yeah exactly so uh, so for me that kind of that would remove the entire fun because fun for me is progression Uh, right so i would say i would say now what about yourself like if i had to cut off let's actually no let's let's flip it on you Okay. If I had to <laughs> remove one of your eyes and replace it with an eye that would be, you know, somehow like Google Lens, but actually good, you know, it would like give you directions. You have to go this way. You can go this way. You can scan people. Oh, this guy has a gun on him. Fucking run or something like that. You know, you know what? I don't get out as much to justify that. <laughs> Just being <laughs> real with you. Like I, you know, I don't need it is the reality. And I don't want any of the possible issues that would come with that. And also it's, it's like a traumatic intervention to have a part of you ripped off and replaced. Even if you don't feel anything, if you're, you know, if you're under anesthesia, uh-huh. for me, you know, I think there's still like a psychological component of it that you would feel. You know how people, when they lose a limb, they have this ghost pain where they still feel the limb the missing limb. Do you, have you heard about this? So, Sorry, go ahead. So, Sorry, go, go, go once more. So people who lose, for example, a hand, okay, mm-hmm. as an example, they still feel pain, like as if they had the hand. So yeah, I heard ghost that. pain. Um, so, it, and it's a trauma for them, the fact that they lost it, because yeah. they, you know, at times they feel like they have it, but then they look and they don't, right? It's like a, a huge psychological thing. I think there would be a huge psychological rejection of something like that, like re- getting an, you know, an eye replaced or, or, or a, a, an arm as well. Uh, I think that would be a problem. Now, you know, my legs don't work, don't work super well. If you tell me, hey, you're going to give me some boosted legs, dude, and I'm going to be able to fucking run and jump again. Hey, yes, man. I would sign up for that. And I would take the risk of the psychological, you know, let's say problems uh but that's only because again i have some issues there if i had just like a normal you know if i could do everything let's say i probably wouldn't take that deal because i you know i I don't feel the need to to have like super strength or anything that's super interesting that you say it because for example with the eyes for myself i would take it and that's probably because i have glasses why do you want it oh but you can let's say that you can already do something like a laser operation, right? Yeah. To fix. So w- would you say that's like comparable doing like an eye surgery to actually replacing it with a cybernetic part? So um, if I would actually see all the same from that eye, I would replace. Uh, I don't see why not. Right. Especially if it would give me some some cool shit like uh basically i don't know scanning people to kind of maybe see the hidden things that i don't see like you know maybe they're carrying a weapon maybe this guy is a ding dong and he he wants to jump me or something like that you know what i mean um that could be cool and i guess because i don't have such a connection with my vision because it's already fucked up i i am kind of willing to um to give up one of the eyes, even though I'm not get really giving it up. 
I'm kind of given my own real eye. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I think really, you know, the, the main area of application would be people that have some kind of physical issue. Um, you know, like Nitro is saying he had an accident, for example. And um, I think for people who are, you know, handicapped or disabled in some way, it would be huge, right? Yeah. If you tell someone who who's on a wheelchair, hey, you can run and jump again, dude, dude, that's I massive. Know. But for someone, you know, like yourself, like you're fit, right? You can do everything. So like for you, you know, the gain of going from like normal, good fit to like extra human feels a bit unnecessary to me when yeah. I think about it. Yeah, it's definitely it's the same what Nitro just said. Um, like he, he, he couldn't really walk yeah. um, the, uh, for seven years, for literally seven years because of his injury. Uh, I can definitely relate because I also had an injury while playing basketball. I had a torn ACL. Right. And Wait, what? What's the ACL for? ACL is like um. Uh, your, is it your I'm, shoulder? No, no, it's in my. Uh, it's in the knee. So it's like the, oh. the ligament that ri ru uh, that runs uh, in the middle of the knee. Oh, okay. Uh, so basically, one time uh, when I was shooting, when I was shooting, uh, somebody stepped under me. I I kind of. Uh, stepped on his foot wrong and it just kind of popped. I, I just felt a pop and then I suddenly couldn't really hold my weight on this knee. Um, wow. So I had a reconstructive, uh, uh, basically, surgery that I had. Um, and that's literally been a lifesaver. I don't really feel that, that I ever had the this, this surgery anymore. And honestly, people, um, so doctors in, when I was living at that time, which was Scotland, said I would not be able to play run or walk again normally yeah. I, would, I would have like you know always the a stick or something like that like a walking stick but i went to poland to some private uh private clinic and they said yeah we do that like all the time the reconstructive um and the reconstructive surgery and they literally take a piece of your different ligament and they join it back up again whoa um so that's that that's that's what happened fun fact there is a guy who has a cybernetic arm in the works it was done through over holy crap yeah they got a, a lot of zero. they gotta thin that down i can't even process yeah. that number through my chat window there talking English to us. <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> um but you know one thing that i think about for the future is the ability to have more insight into our body and brain chemistry so you know we talked about it and people can go back to our conversation on um, in the boosted fitness uh, games, right? Podcast. Uh, games, we we yeah. talk, yeah, we talk a bit about, you know, like brain chemistry and chemistry of the body in general. And even like, even like gut biome, that sort of stuff, right? And r right yeah. now it's a closed box for us. We don't know really how, how the state of it is. Uh, Brother, the, the only way we know, okay. the only way we know is if, you know, if something is not working well, let's say, well, you take steps to make it better, right? Basically. But what I think would be useful, and I, I want to hear from you if, you if you think this as well, if you had some kind of gizmo, like a, a, an Apple watch or whatever watch, right? And it tells you like, hey, uh, guess what? The soda you just drank, the extra large soda made your brain chemistry 20% worse for mm -hmm. the rest of your week, something like that. If it, if it could give you, a, a, you know, an actual stat like that, the moment you did something, people would link the bad outcome, the bad stat they just got with the action. Because mm -hmm. we talked about this in the podcast. For me, a lot of the problem is uh, people don't adopt good habits because there is a lot of distance between something they do and the result. So if they mm -hmm. eat a bullshit meal, the impact between that and, you know, feeling like shit sometimes may be two days or, you know, or, or it could just or be in the long run or no impact if you eat other good stuff after, you know. So it, it would be nice to have that immediate feedback like, hey, what you ate was shit and it made you f feel X percent shit. worse in some specific <laughs> way, right? It gave you like a stat because then people could link it and immediately say, whoa, that had an impact, right? Like, let's pull it back. 
on the Mars bars or whatever it is. So how do you feel about that? If we had that device, do you think that would help people make like a, a really big change or? It could, it could, but um, I think that it wouldn't work in the long run because again, um, I would say that people would need to feel some sort of deprivation at that point. And when they have just a stat on their phone or on, or on, their, uh, on their wrist, it's just a stat, right? For them, it would be something like, "Oh, okay, I feel okay right now. I'm, I'm, um, I, you know, I ate, for example, a Mars bar, right? I feel okay right now, but this watch is saying that I just, you know, I don't know, I've, I gained, let's say, two hundred grams on my on my belly fat or something like that. You right. know, just, just, uh, just throw it there, right? But I feel okay, and I will lose it later. And then they 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 turn off the notification and they go on to the next, uh, huh. the next Mars bar uh, hours later. So I don't think necessarily that would help uh, unless there there was some sort of a punishment system with it. So you're saying I'm giving humanity too much credit. Yeah. <laughs> like, Basically. I'm saying yes, because I, I work with clients on a daily <clears throat> basis and I know that it, even if I tell them straight up what you did. But, hurt but that's your the health. difference. So you telling them they accept and they know you're right at a rational level, but they don't see it until much later. So if you could see it in some like physical, like again, like in, in a stat sense, something that's mm -hmm. linked to your body, I think that people would get it. They would understand the consequence of what they're doing. Like, uh, like Nitro is saying, you know, if you have two energy drinks, it would tell you, you fucked up. You may not notice it now, but you know, it's going to take you two days to recover in some way from the amount of sugar you you've had, you know? Um, and that's not coming from your personal coach, which, you know, he or she is right because you know, it's their job. But again, there's a separation between what you know is good for you and what you actually do. And my thought is that if people had direct factual information about their system, they, they could. But you do have a point because when you look at stats about addiction, for example, people know for a fact it's fucking them. Whatever yeah. crack, whatever it is, right? Name it. And still, there, you know, many times they're unable to 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 take steps to you know get rid of it. So, um, yeah, I, I don't want to under underestimate the power of addiction and like bad habits yeah so i i uh, i definitely went through a little controversial uh yeah i think this would work let me just correct myself i think it would this would work for uh, a subset of people yeah um, if you're like in the more or less okay healthy yes this wouldn't work for people who are addicted and this wouldn't work right. for people that are so for super, for the right? for the 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 joe bob who's you know going into mcdonald's driveway right and get in a fucking extra large soda, which in, in the US means extra, extra large soda. We don't even make them that big outside of the US. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and plugging that amount of sugar into your system. That's golly, definitely. That's uh, whoever is trying to stop is definitely a warrior because it's a war. Um, I used to be addicted to, um, to, to few things uh, I would say in my life and honestly it's a it's a war against yourself to to stop what you're doing and so yeah. definitely say anybody who does anything like that um or is helping somebody get through addiction is a is a freaking champion and a warrior do you think you need some kind of specific motivation to get over something like that or can you can you get over it just because you know it's bad for you do you know what i mean no. do you need something extra like Hey, I'm letting down, you know, my significant other, or I'm letting down someone, or, or, or can you just get over it because you, you know, it's bad for you? So I, uh, I don't think you can get over something because it's bad for you. And the, for example, for me currently, I shouldn't be drinking as much coffee as I'm drinking. I know it's bad for me. Uh, it's at, not at that my bad. Current... It's a little coffee. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it is coffee, but uh, for me at the moment, like for example, like. Um, I used to drink like a lot of coffee, like eight to nine cups a day. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. 
So I used to drink a lot, and now I'm down to like one, maximum two, but I still feel like very jittery after coffee and stuff like that. So I know it's I know it has a bad influence on me, but um, I know it's bad for me, but it doesn't hurt me right now. But for example, if if prohibit God, you know, I had a heart attack tomorrow, and that it, it was proven to be, you know some sort of uh, effect that I had after drinking, you know, that, that, that coffee after, you know, after so many days, I would stop immediately. I would right. like, I, I, so I would say it's usually, and usually, and also I, I find that with my clients that people come to me when there is a huge problem on the plate. People don't come to me because they want to be healthy. They have reached rock bottom. They have reached rock bottom in some, they in need some help. state and they need help and they don't know what to do. They've been to multiple doctors. They've been to multiple nutritionists and they're come and they come to me and they're basically heartbroken Yeah, and they're like down on the ground. Um, they cannot get up because, uh, they just don't know what to do. Um, and it's usually because there was some sort of, like, you know, some uh, chronic disease that was revealed or some, some kind of event that happened, right? Like a heart attack or, or something like that. Yeah. Well, shit, man, that, that's a bit, you know, of a depressive note uh, <laughs> to, to leave things on. Uh, but tell us to, to go a bit like higher pitch before we, we wrap this up. Uh, tell us what's going on on your side. What do you have coming up on your podcast or your streams? What, what are you going to be doing? So on my streams, uh, since I am kind of like, I think I feel like I'm the, the only person in the world who's not streaming cyberpunk. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to be streaming uh, my first playthrough of, of Cyberpunk uh, on my on my channel. People will be able to find some Immortals: Phoenix Rising, which I fucking love. Dude, that game is mm. so fun. Um, this game is just pure fun, and it's pretty I, chill. Yeah, I love it to death. It's it, it's so good, um, and definitely agree with Nitro here. It's it's damn good. It's damn good. Best uh, game Ubisoft that's ever made. Underrated game of 2020. I would actually go for that because people just kind of missed it because it's yeah. so close to uh, Cyberpunk, and it was like, oh, we already had two Ubisoft games. Why do we? Why do we need to get a third open world? You know, from from Ubisoft. Um, so if people actually had to choose one Ubisoft game 2020, I would go go Immortals: Phoenix Rising. Um, and but besides that, um, I still have places open for uh, for consultations. I do consultations on a on a regular basis, and I even people come to my stream and they ask things, yeah. very specific questions, you know, regarding their health. <laughs> and I, and, and I um, yeah, you uh, you always have you know in your title like you know Q and A style. So I think it's AMA, cool. People yeah, can yeah, jump in. Yeah. yeah, if people in chat wanna you know go check out Cole, you can jump in and talk to him about. Yeah, if, health and stuff. If if you have uh, if you have like some sort of problem, or you just want to you know, or you just want some tips on how to start being you know more healthy and like more yourself, like you know maybe maybe more more happy with your um with your physique or something like that. Yeah, definitely. Nitro, definitely if you curious. have a quick question, feel free to drop it. Um, yeah, if you guys uh, just just drop the questions. I don't want to hug yeah, your uh, stream for too long. Dude, we've done an hour. It's crazy. It's it's flown what? by. Yeah, it's one hour and ten minutes already. No, it's like ten minutes. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, so we do have to wrap it up. But if you guys have you know some quick questions, feel free to to oh, post yeah. it in the chat. And I, I would recommend you check out the podcast. You know, I've I've been enjoying it, and and also you know I've yeah, been on hours. it as well. So if you want to see the episode where we talk about motivation and different things, it's uh, it's a good convo. Uh, uh, Nitro says in the last two years I've lost a hundred and thirty pounds. Do you know how much that is in kilos from VR? That's, but lately, I've bit, I've hit a plateau. Is there something I can do to kickstart it again? That is a lot of weight. It's a lot of weight. Congratulations! It's about sixty-five kilos. Wow! Yeah, that's that's insane progress, dude. Um, in the last two years, I okay, like I've hit a plateau. Is there something I can do to kickstart it again? Um, I would say. So, um, dude, there's just so many things. There's just so many things that could be uh, holding you back. Uh, some people just diet too hard. So uh, sometimes you just have to give your body a reset. So you might have to gain the five pounds ba uh, back for uh, for uh, two, three weeks. Just you know, maybe uh, just ba basically like a like a refeed a refeed or something like that. Um, 
so that's one thing like like kind of like, a, like giving yourself a break from uh, like if you have been cutting calories uh, a lot and you have been counting the macros um uh, what I would say is try to eliminate some of. Uh, I'm not sure how much how, how much processed foods you have in your diet, but eliminating those does help me. Not lose the butter. Very, not the butter, please. <laughs> dairy being one of the one of the most processed foods in the world. Just just throwing it out there, you know. Just I know, I know. We ha we have a dispute about the cheese, but but it's the cheese, Colo. You can't. You can't take away the chairs. The chairs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. Disaster. Chess is my vice. Yeah, by the way, I know it's cheese, but I say it's chess. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, 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 funny. it's funny. So uh, first thing I would do is try going like a week or even a few days without any processed food. So try to cut away the, the, the cheese. Uh, try to stick to like lean proteins, uh, slices. I'm not sure uh, what kind of protein uh, sources you have in your diet, but for example, for me, it would be like beans, tofu. Um, I would say something like uh, uh, seitan and stuff like that. So a lot of protein uh, waiting for you in the, in the, in the plant kingdom. Uh, but again, kind of like lean, leaner meats and stuff like that are also good, but try to cut away the, the process. The, I would say, you know, the, obviously the soda drinks you said you haven't been drinking though, so that's good, but something like cheese and um some of the sauces that you might be using that are processed basically something that has hidden sugars in it something that your body can literally grab and use as energy straight away is right. something that you don't be consuming while you're, uh, while right. you're so, losing weight so the idea is you're cutting some of the processing your body needs to do in order to use that as energy because there's always like a byproduct of that process that turns into <laughs> like fat in your body or right extra stuff mm -hmm. like that is that the yeah thank you yeah, yeah so basically uh, for example when you eat an apple uh, when you eat an apple against when you drink uh, uh you know a juice from an apple when you drink juice all of the fiber has been stripped away so your body can literally take that juice and turn it straight into energy it's not it's not into fat i'm not saying it's into fat straight away because it doesn't work like that it's right into energy but when you eat an apple and that energy is still tied to the fiber, your body has to do all the work of splitting the energy away from the fiber because it cannot use fiber. Fiber goes down farther to your to, to your microbiome, which I can talk about for hours. Um, <laughs> um, but it actually takes energy to extract energy. Um, so, and that's actually what you want when you're losing weight. So, so I misunderstood what you said, because the way I phrased it is actually the opposite of what you're saying. Okay. You're saying it's good to have to process stuff in your body. So like, because it takes, you don't want stuff that's just fucking ready to consume as energy yes. necessarily. Yes. Right. And I think this backs up the, the thought of like whole foods. And yes. this is something I said to you. It made me feel a lot better eating like whole a whole meal pasta, for example, instead of white, you know, like regular pasta, let's say, or uh, brown rice instead of white rice. And yes. th because the energy release of that felt like it was more stable and it took yeah. longer, let's say, to kick in. And that connects with what you're saying, because it's harder to process that food in your body. Like it takes more work, right? To break it down. Yes. It's harder for your body. So it takes more time to actually release that energy. And Nitro Beast smoothies are amazing. Like, don't drink juices. Smoothies are the are the shit. Green smoothies. Put some greens in there. Yeah, and... I got, dude. I got a blender. Yeah. Uh, it's really nice because you can throw, you know, different, yeah, different yeah. fruits or ve or veggies in there, and I mix it with Hewel. I don't know if you're familiar. Hewel is like Hewel, a, yeah. Hewel like is the, like a meal replacement or <laughs> supplement, really. Um, yeah. Because sometimes, you know, if I'm not, I don't have the energy to cook like a full meal, let's say, and I still want to get like good nutrition. A lot of times I throw a little fruit or veggies on top of a hewel in the blender. And, you know, that it, that's it's pretty. Um, just to kind of give context to Nitro, uh, what I usually put in my smoothies is I will put some sort of like a base. So I'll put like a couple of bananas in there. Uh, something like a, like a very sweet fruit, like a, like a khaki or, a, or an apple or a pear. Um, I'll put a bunch of greens, so maybe I try to not go ham on the spinach, but I usually go for like <laughs> kale, 
uh -huh. uh, I usually put kale or some color greens. I put that in there, and I also uh, like I will usually use like a soy vanilla. Uh, van what is it called? Vanilla? Vanilla milk? Vanilla milk? Vanilla milk. Yeah, so it's like that. a. It's like a soy vanilla milk that uh, I put in there just so it gives you like a very vanilla uh, aftertaste. And I blend that up. Uh, sometimes I put uh, like a scoop of some pea protein or some rice protein in there. Man. And these things are really, really nice also. Uh, but not always. Just sometimes. Just, we're just, just when I'm feeling a little, you know, a little, like a little yeah, dry. Yeah, you need a little kick. That's nice. Um, so that's usually what I put in my smoothies. And yeah, so uh, one more thing. Sorry, uh, Johnny, for hugging your stream so much, but uh, don't go keto. Carbs are good for you. Eat all the huh. eat all the potatoes. Okay, like don't like don't process them in the fryer, uh, but actually put them like maybe uh, maybe bake them or maybe like st st steam them. Uh, but basically, what's what's amazing about potatoes, for example, like. Potatoes are just so like plain, right? You uh -huh. eat a potato, um, yes. but if when you steam a potato and you let it cool off, it, it uh, there's a lot of uh, it kind of builds up the resistant starch in mm. the potato. So usually when when you would eat a hot potato, it would be like a, I would say like a 200 calories per like a per like a big potato, right? But when you let it cool down and simmer down the amount of resistant starch builds up and you only and you only can absorb about 70 percent of that 200 calories uh, because the resistant starch you cannot take it but your microbiome takes it as food and that's so nourishing for your body because then it kind of like goes into your microbiome which we can get into like at some yeah other this point, is but... this is something we we should talk more about you know at a later chat yeah. because the the idea yeah. of carbs it has become like a you know hey avoid carbs it's so popular yeah. right like low carb or, or no carb even like go keto so it, it would be interesting to maybe debunk some of that or, or get your you know your input on yeah. that i used to be keto also but that that nearly gave me um that nearly gave me uh, diabetes wow yes well that's so another story right there as well man I'm uh, again, I don't want to talk too much, but we can talk about that at some other point. And maybe I can have you on, on another podcast. And yeah, can... yeah, it would be great. It, it, there's always like every time we chat, there, it feels like there's a, a ton of different it's tangents so we could go that. on. <laughs> yeah. Shit. But listen, thanks. Thanks for being on, man. Yeah. And did you have any like final thoughts or things you wanted to um, talk about? No, nah, man. Just uh, thank you so much for having me, by the Pleasure, way, for, first of all. Um, uh, thank you so much for giving me the platform to to, to talk about uh, some stuff that, that I can talk about. And you're you're amazing. Keep up what you're doing. I really, I oh, whenever I come to your stream, dude, I always feel uh, welcome. Um, Good vibes, man. Yeah, amazing vibes from the stream. And yeah, guys, just eat a lot of uh, healthy whole foods. Um, work out sometimes, or or you know, or just just keep active just as much as you can. I know not, not a lot of people like. Some people just can't, uh, but just, just yeah. try to stay. Active. What's okay for you, right? Like find your, yes. what's a yeah. workout for you. And then it's like uh, being active for you. It might be just walking up the stairs or it yeah. might just be doing some, some push-ups at, at some point, but, uh, yeah. And just stay amazing guys. Thank you so much for listening. Stay boosted. Listen, it's a good stay message. Boosted. Go check out Colos podcast, Colos stream, and, uh, we'll stay in touch, man. As always a pleasure. Take care. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, dude.